happy Thursday. Welcome back. Uh, Brian and I are so excited to be here again. We yes. had an awesome day yesterday. We had some Thank great you. time. Yes, great time. Chatting with everyone in the chat. Um, we have a jam-packed day today. A little bit, right? A little bit of everything. <laughs> so we've got some chat and win going on. Uh, We'll let you know when to chat and when, but you can win $30 uh, gift card from Moo.com. We've got a survey that's up there in the chat pod. Please go ahead and take it. Um, and you will be entered to win a year of Creative Cloud, which is super exciting. And then we also have portfolio reviews happening. And we also have some Brian movie trivia. Yes, bonus features. <laughs> that's right. And what you get for that is just like mad props. Yes, so. <laughs> and my respect. So. Cool. So what are we drawing today? <laughs> today we're going to draw another character of mine uh, named Jasper J. Pumpkinhead. And he's a character that was kind of born out of um, Inktober a couple years ago. Ooh. And speaking of Inktober, we're going to be focusing on inking. Inking. Right. Yeah, I got some great feedback last night from social media from you that watched on here that you want to see some inking tips. So I'm going to draw Jasper and then really focus on how I like to ink uh, digitally uh, using Fresco. Awesome. Yeah, cool. So I'll get started and cool. we can talk. Yeah. So what are you using to, to ink to start uh, with? What, well, I'll brush? first do my okay. uh, underdrawing in that same brush I used yesterday, cool. which is the ultimate uh, Kyle Ultimate Pencil Soft. Awesome. And I'll just start doodling around here. Looks like we've got a lot of the same people back from yesterday, which is super Yay, exciting. Yeah, that's amazing. Voodoo Val. I see um, Kerwin is back. Awesome. I think Jordan was there yesterday. Got a lot of great people. Repeat customers. That's awesome. Repeat customers. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start off with some trivia yes, from Yes, please. Bolt. This will be fun. Oh, from Bolt. Great. From Bolt. So we actually answered this question yesterday. Mm -hmm. What is special? to Brian about the movie Bolt. Oh, yes. <laughs> For those of you paying attention. And if you weren't paying attention, then you get to find out some cool trivia about Brian. Right, right. <laughs> hey, Paul. Hey, Sam. Hey, G. Meg Costa. I think I said that right. I'm not sure. Jimmy Mitchell, welcome back. Yay. So yeah, just roughing it out, roughing Jasper out here, mm -hmm. getting the big volumes in place so cool. that I can ink it up. So what, uh, how, how was, how was Jack born? Uh, Jasper. Jasper, was, sorry. I know. Uh, <laughs> he's very Jack-like, very Jack, certainly uh, inspired by Jack Skellington. Uh, but he came about, um, I was, um, I like to pride myself on dad jokes uh, because <laughs> I am a dad. And one Halloween, I wanted to do a funny drawing called uh, Steam Pumpkin. Uh, and so nice. steampunk. And I drew this little uh, scarecrow with a pumpkin head, and he had this cool steampunk jetpack. And I uh, texted that drawing to my publisher and said, hey, we should make an animated short about this guy. Ooh, and yeah. uh, my publisher and I have always wanted to do a short, an animated short. And uh, sure enough, uh, he wrote back, this was like a midnight text, <laughs> and uh, he wrote back, and he's like, yep, and we'll start next week. And so six months later, the short is halfway animated. Oh, nice. And uh, I'm very excited. It's a project that's very special to me. Uh, and it's going to be hand-drawn, so traditionally animated, uh, traditionally painted, and feel like a classic Disney animated short from the, uh, from the 50s. Nice. Yeah, so. So where will we, where will we? I cannot talk. Where <laughs> will we be able to see it? Uh, it'll be around. Uh, surely um, it'll be like on YouTube and that sort of thing. But we're going to try to enter it into festivals and get it seen around town. Very um, cool. And, and that sort of thing. But it's a it's a very sweet little Halloween short. Aww. Uh, and if we have some time later, maybe I'll show you some rough animation. Ooh, that would be super cool. Yeah, cool. I okay. love that. Okay, great. Cool. Oh, Paul, that's awesome. Paul already has his first fresco illustration going yesterday, from yesterday inspired by you. He has 94 layers, triple groups, and happy with the performance. Yay! Incredible, <laughs> incredible. So I'll be check, sure to tell the team. Yeah, that's amazing. So I'm going to show you something that happens a lot when I draw digitally is I never account for the canvas size. But mm. never fear, because you can select. Selections are here. Yes. And then scale. And nice. there you go. I've got room for his little feet. And um, 
Jasper is very much an idea man. He's got a, <laughs> a lot of ideas in that big empty head. And uh, so he, I did a book uh, about him last year called okay. um, The Fabulous Contraptions of Jasper J. Pumpkinhead. And uh, you can see all his inventions in that book. Oh my gosh, that sounds awesome. Deselect and then back to sketching. Cool. Did anyone figure out the trivia? Uh, yeah, we did. I think, uh, was it Kerwin? I saw someone uh, answered it um, and they said his kids, which Yay. is kind of like the partial answer. So the fun, the fun trivia about Bolt is that Brian's entire family is listed in the credits. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and a very special moment when uh, we were fortunate enough to take the family on a Disney cruise. Oh, and, wow. And uh, they have a big screen by the pool, and they were screening Bolt. And uh, we were out there enjoying some ice cream by the pool, and the credits came on, and we saw all our names. That's so In the Bahamas, in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> on a Disney uh, cruise. On a Disney cruise. <laughs> Uh, it was a, a very surreal moment and uh, one of those moments that just, you know, makes me humble and grateful for the opportunities I've been able to have in my career. Yeah. Okay. So it was Kyle who got it right. Yay, Kyle. So congratulations, Kyle. Yes. So was that the first time that you had seen that? Did you know that that was going to be the case, that you were all going to be in the credits? Uh, well, we knew ahead of time because okay. they, you know, you have to sign off to make sure your name is spelled correctly. Oh, right. So right. like we had seen, but... Um, we didn't realize because here's some trivia. You ready for this? Yes. Uh, Bolt was actually originally a movie called American Dog, oh, which was really? directed by Chris Sanders. Mm. And Chris Sanders, who directed Lilo and Stitch and all of that. So I started working on uh, American Dog, but then when that shifted over to Bolt, they grandfathered, so to speak, grandfathered in all the production babies from American Dog oh, onto okay, Bolt. Oh, okay, gotcha. So we all got in there on a technicality. Cool. But if you guys ever try to Google American Dog, there's some amazing VizDev artwork out there. Um, and uh, it's a little known project, so. That's fun. Yeah. Cool. Oh, we've got Chad uh, Rolfs is here. Hi, Chad. I actually met Chad uh, at Adobe Max this year. Oh, we've, nice. We've chatted multiple times and finally got to meet in person, which is awesome. fun. Awesome. Hi, Chad. <laughs> um, and uh, Jordan just started playing with Fresco yesterday as well because he found out it's available on the Surface Pro 6. So Ooh, nice. Got a lot of converts here. Thank you. Yeah, I love that, right? <laughs> okay, so we're going to do, we're going to continue on Bolt. We're going to awesome. do some true and false. Great, great, great. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. So true or false, uh, the animators would roll around the hallways to try and get inside of the mind of Rhino mm. while they were making the film. True or false. True or false. <laughs> so great. I love this. So Paul's asking, didn't Sanders save the dragon character on How to Train Your Dragon? Is that yes, true? because uh, I didn't work on that movie, but I do know that um, he came on to that movie uh, in the middle and it needed some reworking, as most movies do in the midway point. Um, <clears throat> and I think he brought Toothless okay. to life. I mean, that's very much gotcha. a Chris Sanders character. Uh -huh. uh, but before, uh, the movie used to center around, uh, there's a little dragon that you see earlier in the movie, in the actual movie, that's like this little scrawny one that breathes fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was originally oh, really? the main dragon for the whole movie. Oh, interesting. But then Chris Sanders came in and kind of put his uh, very um, signature character yeah. style Toothless is one of the great uh, animated characters, for yeah. sure. Kathleen said that um, Jasper is the reason she started following you on Instagram. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's really Yay. cool. Thank you so much. Hi, Marcos. Uh, and Chad said his fav favorite character is Rhino. Let it begin, awesome. let it begin. And remember we talked about yesterday how story artists do the scratch voices? Um, this is bonus trivia. Um, the voice for Rhino is not an actor, but a story artist. Oh, really? Yeah, his name That's is Mark Walton. Cool. And he's a real character and a real fanboy in life. Uh, so That's awesome. uh, he pretty much is Rhino in real life. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. I think we've stumped people. Okay. Not having any people answer whether they think it's true or not that, uh, Believe it or not. that the animators rolled around in the hallway right. to get inside the mind. And the answer, answer is, is true. True. Yeah, very true. <laughs> we had giant inflatable. 
those uh, I forget what they're called, like not Zumba balls, but like a um, hamster. It says like a an inflatable hamster. Yeah, ball. it's it's those things they got. They were really popular yeah. in, in New Zealand. We got a couple of those. Yeah. Filled them with air and would roll around. Kind of like, a, what was that movie, Bubble Boy? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we, we just went to the prop house and got the old bubble out, <laughs> cleared the moths out of it. <laughs> that's, yes. a, that's a pretty old movie, actually. Yeah, that's a that's a deep pull. Yeah. Maybe it's on Disney Plus. We'll have to check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Cool. All right, so Jasper's coming together pretty quick. Yeah, I'm pretty done, and so. Um, Jasper is, is an old-timey character. I, I like to say he's from the way back when. Mm -hmm. And so I always like to put fun little twists. Uh, so, like, instead of the standard, like, electric light bulb idea, you know, like, oh, I have an idea, oh, and the yeah. light bulb goes off. A lantern. For him, it would be a lantern. <laughs> That's so awesome. I always like to try to put those little character uh, specifics into even the simplest of illustrations. Yeah. Uh, I did a drawing not too long ago where he was animating, and his light table was a... A uh, piece of glass that he had a jar with fireflies underneath. Oh, so that's, that's how cute. he was like using a light box. Yeah, it seems like it would be fun to sort of brainstorm things like you know that are that are that we're used to today and envision like how that same yes. thing would manifest. Yes, totally. A hundred or two hundred years ago. Totally. So I'm going to reduce the opacity on this layer, and then start going into the inking. Uh, so let's do that. Which is, if oh, you were watching okay. yesterday, we know that that's Brian's process is you do a rough sketch and then keep sort of uh, refining. Yeah, it's all about refining uh, and, and getting it down. Uh, Jasper is a little more simple character to draw, so I don't need mm -hmm. to do as many layers right. of refining. So I'm going to go more into the inking process here. And for this, I have a favorite one, which is the sharp inker. Okay. Um, oh yeah, I know that's a that's a really popular one. Yeah. I know Kyle says that that's one of his favorites as well. That's amazing. Yeah, so I'm gonna use this one and I'm going to play with the smoothing. That's something we haven't done yet. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this just helps um, give it uh, a little cleaner look, a mm -hmm. more finished look. Now an earlier, another adjustment you made this morning right before we started was mm -hmm. adjusting the, the pressure. Your Apple yes. Pencil pressure, yeah. um, which is something that you can do. I don't know if we want to show them. Let's show. Quickly. Yeah, because that was really helpful for me. That was in Home. Um, it's under the Settings Under icon. Settings, yeah. right there. And if you go to App Settings. App Settings. So for those of you who want to access App Settings, you can access them from the home screen or you can access them directly on the canvas. Um, we go to Input and there's those little tick marks. Yeah, and by default it shows up here, uh, which is uh, good and a, and a fair medium. but. Um, it, it it's interesting because the lighter I press, the less marks I make mm -hmm. on that medium setting. Now, if I press hard, of course, you get that really nice thick line, right? Right. So we're going to get rid of those. And let's go ahead and see the difference when I change it to a little lighter. And now... Yeah, I'm, much better. Yeah, I, there's a little bit more range. Yep. Uh, it's a little more slippery. It takes a little more control but it's a little more to what I'm used to and see how you can do that kind of really nice, nice yeah. gradual, uh, almost looks like Garfield there, right? Yeah, very cool. Um, but, um, so that's why I like, but let's go ahead and I wanna see, cause I like how that feels. Uh, let's see what the, the lowest uh, version what is. The, feels like. And while we're watching this, just as a reminder, everyone, um, we've got an Adobe Live viewer survey. So for those of you who are always on here, we want to know what you think about Adobe Live. Um, so take the survey, and you could be entered to year, win a year of Creative Cloud. Man, I need to do my my uh, voice <laughs> warm-ups. <laughs> stumbling over my yeah, words Human today. Torch was denied a bank loan. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so I actually like the lowest setting the best. That feels the most natural. So, uh, yeah. But now you guys know how to adjust that. Yeah. Um, Paul is asking if there's a way to merge layers that have different blend modes without affecting the color value. Mm. Um, unfortunately, I that is one of the things that I really wish that we could do. Yeah. But when you merge layers, they have to take on the same sort of blend mode. Yep. So yep. Fresco does what Photoshop does, um, and we match the blend mode of the top one, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. um, a workaround would be just to group the layers. Um, I know that's not merging them, but um, Fortunately, Fresco has like a 10,000 layer limit, which wow. is like ridiculous. I don't know. All right, that's the next challenge. <laughs> if, if you can make a drive of 10,000 layers. <laughs> that's my personal get, challenge to you. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say you get a year of Creative Cloud for free, but I can't guarantee oh, yeah, that yeah. one. 
<laughs> Adobe does not endorse this content. <laughs> cool. And also, thank you, Voodoo Val. We have 13 minutes and 45 seconds until chat and win. Um, so be sure to get ready. I'll have to come up with a good chat and win question. Yeah, yeah, very good. OK, yeah, I think. I Maybe think. like favorite character. Uh -huh. OK, so which is, do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite movie? And it doesn't have to be one that you've worked on. Oh, uh, Star Wars New Hope. Star Wars New Hope. Yeah, favorite okay. movie. So maybe we'll ask what everyone's favorite Star Wars character oh, is. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, I think before I start inking this guy, I might show you some of my warm ups. Do you think that might be? Yeah. Uh, so um, just to show you kind of like what I did before, but just this sort of thing that helps get you loose mm -hmm. um, and, and gets some control is just doing this sort of like scaling of your strokes. And yeah. getting, you know, that gradual build. Cause yeah. you, you, you never want to do something like that, right? Like, yeah, so. that's totally true. Um, uh, Spencer Nugent, he's an industrial designer, and I think he actually uh -huh. might be listening right now. Oh wow! Um, one of his things is like you wouldn't you wouldn't go run a marathon without warming up and stretching, That's so you shouldn't right. start an illustration without warming oh, up. And so, I love that analogy. Same thing. Yeah. Uh, the other one that I really like to do is just draw circles. Uh, mm -hmm. This loosens you up as well, um, and it just gets your especially when you're inking, mm -hmm. because the hard part about inking is you don't want to kill the life of the drawing. Yeah. Right? There's so much life in a, in a rough sketch. And um, when you're inking, you want to kind of preserve that. So mm -hmm. um, after I've done that sort of thing, we'll go here and cool. cut and start getting in on this guy. And yeah, smoothness is up rather high, which sometimes affects the uh, responsiveness, but not to any point that I've found to be distracting. Yeah, I notice. It, I know that if you turn it all the way up, it kind of acts as like you have. You're sort of like, um, it's sort of like you have a string attached. Yeah, like a noodle. I, yeah. A friend of mine said it's like drawing with a noodle. Yeah. Um, but um, you can see here, and I'm just kind of picking out my favorite kind of lines. Mm -hmm. How do you decide the thicks and the thins? Do you have any sort great, of? Great, great question. Yeah. Um, so anything that is receiving light, the light side of an object, I do thin lines. Mm -hmm. And anything that is the dark shadow side okay. um, is, is thicker. So I'm kind of imagining uh, default, even though the lantern's above them, uh, 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 kind of top down from the screen left to screen right. Yep. So I'm going to let that kind of motivate. Mm -hmm. So we've got uh, Sam asking for sneaks of features. Oh, yes. I think I can sneak a couple of things. Nice. So as you know, um, Fresco is on both iPad and Windows devices. So the Surface Studio, Surface Studio 1 and 2, Surface Pro 4, 5, and 6, uh, Mobile Studio Pro. So it's free for all of those devices. Um, if you do want access, there are some premium features. There's a few brushes. Um, that you would need to get, um, that, that you can get um, in the premium. Um, but we are going to be um, making more features free, actually, in Fresco by default, which is pretty nice. exciting. Nice. That's awesome. So that's a good sneak that's coming. Um, and also, um, right now, this is a small one, but for those of you who are on Windows, right now we don't have color libraries. That will be coming very soon as well. Um, and there's a lot of really exciting stuff. Uh, Brian actually snuck the ruler yes. yesterday. <laughs> Oops, my bad. <laughs> no, nah, that's good. <laughs> so yeah, there's some there's some exciting stuff coming. Paul's asking for type, and what I can say is we know that a lot of people want to use type in their illustrations. Yeah, type is good. And that is where I will shut my mouth. Got it. Yep. <laughs> Moving on, you can see now that I'm uh, using a little bit more of a broken line. It's still pretty smooth, but because Jasper is made uh, of a pumpkin, uh, I want to get some of that, you know, uh, pumpkin texture in there. And that's something we started to talk a little bit about yesterday, which is, you know, having um, the texture of the object inform what your um, material is made out of. Mm -hmm. So even down to, you know, it's past Halloween now, but for those of you that carved pumpkins, you know that the inside of the pumpkin is a little pulpier. Mm -hmm. And you know, you get those little serrated edges from where you use the knife. So I try to put those in uh, to describe the inside uh, of yeah. Jasper uh, to differentiate from the more smooth 
uh, outside of his head. Very cool. Just as a reminder, we've got Chat and Win coming up in about eight and a half minutes. Um, and the, the chat challenge chat challenge is going to be, what is your favorite Star Wars character? <laughs> which I feel like should probably be pretty easy. Yeah, right. But maybe some people have trouble deciding which one. Well, that's true. Uh, I would say Mr. Spock. No. Um, <laughs> we'll see how many Baby Yodas we get. Yeah, there we go. Paul is asking if you ever use the rake brushes. No, um, I haven't. I see that they're on there, but I don't know what they do. What are the rake brushes? They actually brushes? work kind of like a rake. Like they kind of give a rake texture. Oh. I've seen them used for like sort of hair. Oh, okay. You know, some stylized Maybe I'll do some hair. like hay at the bottom. And we yeah, can there use you go. We could try those some out. Some of the, the rake brushes. You can see, even though I'm inking, I'm still using shorter strokes that are defining the form. Mm -hmm. I'm never really going like this. Yeah. Right, because that will tend to kill the drawing, um, the life of the drawing that is. Yeah, that's a really good suggestion because I know Kathleen mentioned, she's like, I can get my sketches done, but when I come to the inking, it feels like Yes. it's, it's a little bit harder to control it's or to, to, to really like refine in a way that feels nice. Right, one, too key, heavy. one key to good inking that you're seeing me do here more than I did yesterday uh -huh. is rotating the canvas. Yeah, that's always, true. Yeah. Always getting it to the right angle that feels good for your hand because mm -hmm. that's going to control your line the most. And uh, it's true for digital inking but also physical inking that um, pulling a line will be easier than pushing, pushing a line. Yeah, you have definitely have more control. More control that way. So if you're ever like having to do a line, um, you know, always arrange your paper so that you can you can pull it and not push it. Mm -hmm. Very cool. All right, let's move on to some more trivia. Yes, yes. So we're gonna move on to Wreck It Ralph. Oh man. Which as we One mentioned yesterday, uh, Brian was the voice of Cyborg. Yes. Which is a cool fact in and of itself. Yes. So, Ralph was almost a bulldozer, true or false? Oh, true or false. We'll see if anyone. Yes. That. That's, that's like, that feels like a pretty hard one. That, that's do you know a the deep answer cut. to that one? I believe I do. Okay. I believe I know what they're speaking about. Okay. And, um, yeah. So this I will be using the eraser more than okay. than I have in the past, and that's just because I'm trying to get something somewhat presentational. Mm -hmm. And so uh, with Jasper's head done, um, I'll move on to his little little, little stem, stem. <laughs> and this I'm going to break up a little bit more because you know those pumpkin stems mm -hmm. can get pretty like knotted. Yep. And. Um, this I can play with. So do you ever sort of play with, you know, like his, his, I guess like facial characteristics uh -huh. at all? Oh yes, definitely. And okay. when I show you the animation, uh, you'll see how the animator, who's a very talented animator named uh, Tina Navrosky. Okay. And uh, she works uh, out of Toronto. She worked on the Cuphead game. Okay. Do you know Cuphead at all? Uh -uh. Cuphead um, was a pretty amazing video game that uh, was all hand animated. Oh my gosh. So the sprites that they used for all the character animation uh, was all hand painted, wow. hand inked. Definitely look up uh, when we're done here, the, the YouTube clips if you're not familiar with it. But she was a brilliant animator on that game and mm -hmm. now she's uh, the animation supervisor for the, for the short. Very cool. Um, this right. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, so we have some people. Oh, okay. We, we had one true. Okay, yes. so the question was, is Wreck-It Ralph was almost a bulldozer. We have one true and we had a few falses. What's your guess? Uh, true. That apparently is true. Yes, because uh, very early on, um, uh, there was a big discussion on what uh, he was going to be, what Ralph mm -hmm. actually was going to be. Because yeah. we knew he had to be a bad guy. Right. But we're like, well, what what is he? Is he... Because Donkey Kong's great, right? Because uh -huh. he's a giant ape and it's like King yep. Kong, right? Yep. So uh, we're like, what can he be? Well, he could be an abominable snowman. Mm -hmm. He was, for a time, he was a Yeti. 
And that was like as a nod to King Kong, uh-huh. Donkey Kong. Yeah. And then I remember at one point there was a weird drawing where he was a bulldozer. <laughs> so <laughs> kind of crazy. Uh, screenwriter Phil Johnson even imagined him as part cat, part baboon, part yep. dog, part skunk, part weasel, tip ear, pig, wild boar, <laughs> 143rd ape. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Uh, that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of stuff. And if you look in the art book, I think you can see some of those drawings, which is kind of fun. And Phil Johnson is great. He was the writer and he was the co-director on Wreck-It Ralph 2. Gotcha. So um, really, uh, and does an amazing uh, John C. Riley impersonation. So whenever we did our early screenings and we couldn't get John in, mm-hmm. um, we were um, able to use Phil. And he gotcha. sounded just like him. <laughs> uh, so it, I don't know if uh, it's Jean or Jean, uh, but uh, asking what do you work on at home? Like what's your device at home? Uh, right here, this iPad, iPad. iPad Pro. And I love it. I used to have a huge Cintiq that would chain me to my desk, mm-hmm. but it was the only way I could do it. But now um, with uh, this this device and these types of apps, uh-huh. I can do all my illustrations, even storyboarding. Wow. I figured out some little workarounds so That's that I cool. can do storyboarding uh, on my iPad. Um, so this this is pretty great. Cool. Hi, Jeff. I actually know Jeff. Hi, Jeff. He does some really crazy, crazy photorealistic drawings. And, oh, awesome. And fresco. Oh, wow. Uh, so Jesse's asking, just got here, what art book is that that you're just referring to? Oh, the art of Wreck-It Ralph, yeah. the first Wreck-It Ralph movie. And Peter's saying, what, asking what brush you're using, and it's the Inker. That's right. From Kyle's Inker. It's, it's a built-in brush in fresco under the pixel brushes. I think you can just go under mm-hmm. inking, and it should be right there. Um, and what Brian did, if you missed it, he adjusted some of his uh, Apple Pencil settings. So if you go to the settings gear icon and then go to app settings and input, you can adjust your pencil settings, the pressure sensitivity. So you have yours way down at the bottom. Oh yeah, all the way down. Cool. <laughs> Which actually, uh, health tip is really good for your hand. Oh yeah. Because the the less pressure sensitive it is, mm-hmm. uh, according to this chart, how it's mm-hmm. labeled, um, uh, your hand's gonna cramp up more because you're yeah. having that to hit it harder, so. Yeah, totally. Um, and don't forget to do your stretches, right? Yes. You gotta do your stretches and get it all like out because. I was actually just gonna mention that. That's one thing that we've actually talked a lot about in Fresco. Yeah. There's a woman who works at Adobe who is very interested in making sure that like we we encourage um, people who are using our creative apps to be healthy. Yes. And so we've even thought about like, maybe we put in something that you can turn on in Fresco, like a timer that says, hey, take a break. Not a bad idea. There's a idea. couple stretches that you can do. Because RSI is a serious thing. It really kind is, of stress guys. injury. Like, yeah. I've had to wear a brace before, oh. actually. Yeah. I've had friends who've had to get the surgeries. I've had friends who've yeah. had to just stop drawing completely. Yeah because of it, so not to yeah. get preachy, but that's, uh, yeah, cause I know careful. even for like my daughter, who's at school and not watching this, but uh, <laughs> she will get like locked into like drawing mode yeah. and just go for hours yeah. and it's like, oh. Yeah. All right, everyone, we've got 20 seconds until chat and win. Oh man. We're gonna ask you to, and hold off, uh, hold <laughs> off right now, but like, what is your favorite Star Wars character? That's the chat and win. Um, we want to know. And the, the prize is a $30 gift card from Moo.com, which is pretty awesome. Um, and you can use it on anything. All right, here we go. Favorite we go. Star Wars character. We'll be back. All right, we're back. We're ready for the chat and win. We want to hear all of your Star Wars favorite characters. How many baby Yodas are we going Yes, get? right. We got Yoda, baby Yoda, Yoda, Stormtrooper, Leia. Wow. Storm- Ooh, Stormtrooper, Leia. I want to draw that. Uh, awesome. C-3PO. Chewie. Uh-oh. Felipe's never watched. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Shame. <laughs> Shame. BB-8. Awesome. Original Yoda. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. A Bib Fortuna, shout out, deep cut. <laughs> Way to go, Kyle. Awesome. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. 
couple of BBA. Yoda seems to be the front Yoda's runner, though. Yoda's a big though. one. I'm actually a C-3PO fan. Oh, nice. Yes. How about you? Uh, I was Boba Fett, but now it's Kylo Ren. Mm, yeah. So, amazing BB-8. Max Rebo, love Max <laughs> Rebo. <laughs> Lando, yes. Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar right. Love. Yep. Fun trivia. Right. Jar Jar was almost in um, Wreck-It Ralph too. Nice. So, congratulations, mm. Kendra Cose. You've won today. Yay! Chat and win. You get $30 gift card from Moo.com. Amazing. Everyone else. You can go to moo.com slash Adobe Live and get 15% off. So everyone's a winner. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> As our hands oh. disappear. Whoa. <laughs> the disappearing hand uh -huh. trick. All right. Congratulations. Yeah. So great. Yeah. So you can see here with the scarf, um, because it's like a knitted scarf, mm -hmm. uh, I've broken up the line even more and give it that kind of soft, yeah. kind of wooly texture. Similar to what you were showing us yesterday at the end of the stream, how that's you would right. draw wool differently from how you draw like a fabric that's a little bit more drapey. Yeah. Yeah, and that's something you see a lot more in the European comics mm -hmm. compared to um, like the American, like more mainstream, like Marvel, DC comics. Yeah. Which it's just a different style of drawing, but I encourage you guys if you haven't, to look into European comics, French comics. Uh, there's a whole world of styles out there and just brilliant draftspeople mm -hmm. that um, uh, you can find a lot of inspiration from. Yeah. And Kendrick, yes, congrats. That was you who won. Yay. <laughs> Kendrick said, I just came here to chat. <laughs> well, you walked away with a $30 yeah. gift card. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Very cool. So any specific European comics that you would suggest taking a look at? Um, yeah, definitely um, Asterix is really good. Asterix. Uh, that's a really good, and it's like classic. Uh, Tintin, of course, is really mm, good, yeah. right? Um, and uh, anything by uh, the artist named Mobius. Uh, okay. I forget his real name, but his pen name is Mobius. Uh, he was an incredible uh, artist, French artist. Uh, if you look up those three, uh, you're going to be kind of blown away. Cool. Yeah, really cool. Well, let's show. How do we turn the double or the the pen tap off again? Oh yeah, you go to the um, app settings. App settings. And then if you uh, open touch. Oh yeah. Or, or yeah, I guess it's right there. The double tap. And we're going to change it to no action, and that way we can stay focused. Yeah. On our inking. So Philippa said, the pumpkin's so cute. The pumpkin's name is Jasper, and it's one of uh, Brian's characters. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, he's really seemed to uh, hit a chord with people. Mm -hmm. um, it's really fun to see him kind of take off. And uh, like I said, it's been really fun. I storyboard, it's just a two minute little short, um, but it's really fun and just fun to get back into that 2D animation, mm -hmm. you know, kind of where I began. Yeah, very much so. So what is Jasper holding? Uh, well, he's just going to be resting his hand oh, on his knee there. Hand. Oh, okay, gotcha. And, uh, oh, the, yeah, see. it's a little I bit see. of a glove there. Yeah. yeah. I thought for some reason I was thinking his hand was in, but it's in the glove. Oh, yes, right. <laughs> right, because he's just got little stick hands if he didn't have his glove. Yeah. I should mention, too, that while we were developing the short, um, I had done these initial designs of Jasper, for Inktober, but then um, I asked a coworker, my very talented coworker, by the name of Corey Loftus. Mm -hmm. um, he's a amazing character designer, and he did the character designs for Zootopia, Ooh. and Wreck It Ralph too, okay. and I think one as well. And um, I knew he was into kind of like scarecrow characters, uh -huh. and so I kind of bugged him one day at lunch and I said, "Hey, do you mind doing?" Uh, design pass over Jasper. Mm -hmm. And so this version of Jasper uh, that I'm drawing is kind of like the mesh between like oh, cool. my original one and then he took it and made it like an uh -huh. animation model. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, which is really Yeah, fun. that is interesting. I was going to ask with like Otto and Victoria and Jasper, do you have you do you solicit input from other people or are they you know, obviously you said Jasper. For Jasper, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, for Otto and Victoria, no. It was just something that just I something, developed. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Um, that I really just... And, and they developed over time. Like, mm -hmm. I think if you look at the illustrations from the first book 
to the soon uh, upcoming third book, um, uh, you'll see that there's an evolution there. Mm -hmm. Much like when you look at like early Simpsons yeah. uh, versus like <laughs> Simpsons now. It's like, oh my gosh. But I, I think that's natural and that uh -huh. happens. Yeah, for sure. Cool. I think I want to go on and ask some questions about Tangled because you also worked oh, on Tangled. Yes, 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 yes. So this is going to be more just answer. So what is the name of Rapunzel's pet? Mm -hmm. I feel like maybe that would be an easy one. Yeah, that, that, that should be. You guys should get this. We'll see. We'll see. So you mentioned earlier that you like to put Jasper in situations where, like you mentioned, you're drawing a lantern over his head rather than a light bulb. Because uh -huh. His head is so full of ideas. Right. What other situations do you put him in? Or like, um, I guess I'm not familiar with the the anime or like what kind of stories. Yeah. So um, he's a problem solver, mm -hmm. and he lives on a farm. We're not sure where, and we're not really sure who the farmer is. Um, actually, there's a fun nod to who helped bring him to life in another one of my books. Mm -hmm. But um, he's he's bored. He, he's a scarecrow <laughs> that's good at everything except scaring crows away. Mm -hmm. And uh, because he just can't focus on that. He's got too many big ideas. So um, he uh, likes to find problems around the farm, other animals mm -hmm. that need help. Um, one little vignette is there's a little baby pig who's scared by thunder. Aww. And so he invents earmuffs uh, so for the little pig so that it can be happy. <laughs> so it's like real simple kind of charming yeah, stuff like that. That's you know? super fun. Um, it, it, it's harmless, harmless fun, uh, kind of old timey fun. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, he, so um, that's kind of the, the world he plays in right now. <laughs> Kathleen said Jasper is definitely from a farm in Ohio. Oh, nice. Okay, <laughs> great. Great. <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. And we got Lindsay Palmer got it right first. Oh, Pascal. nice, Lindsay. That's right. Yeah. And I'll add to that that uh, there was an animator, uh, or no, she was a lighting artist, and she had a pet chameleon. Oh, and really? And we bring it in so that the texture artist could oh, take that's super reference cool. photos of it. I bet that's got to be fun. Now, you you told me something before the stream started that uh -huh. um, on Bolt, yes. your team actually had a hamster. Yes, yeah, we did. We had, <laughs> and I feel so bad because I forget his name, but <laughs> <laughs> we had a hamster uh, for reference because, of course, that's the biggest thing for all art, right? Yeah. Even for silly stuff like a pumpkin-headed scarecrow. Like, you want to do your reference, and, and then you can make your drawings real. So we brought uh, a hamster in so that we could observe it. Mm -hmm. And just like you would in elementary school, there was a sign-up sheet to bring the hamster home for the weekend because no one was there on the weekend. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, there was one weekend where I got to bring the little Were hamster Were you super – I mean, like, I I remember even in school, like, when you yes. could, like, sign up to take, like, the baby chick home. I'd be like, I don't want it to be me. I know. <laughs> Try, well, take that feeling and then times it by 400 other oh people gosh, oh are God. expecting this hamster to return. <laughs> uh, and, and the authenticity of the movie depends on its oh, survival. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there was there was some stress. but Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then our producer, Clark Spencer, uh -huh. uh, who is now, he's now running the place. He's the president. Oh, wow. Which is super cool. Um he uh, is a big dog person. Mm -hmm. So he used uh, that movie, Bolt, which he was producing as an excuse to bring his dogs in. Oh, work. of course. Of so course. we're like, oh, okay. It's for work purposes, yes, obviously. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. So next question. What happens to Rapunzel's hair once it is cut? Mm. Hmm. Some details I'm adding here. Yeah. Are just little seams, yeah. Again, to to it's, balance the big empty spaces with with de more detailed spaces. Mm -hmm. Similar to as you mentioned yesterday, which I thought was a really good tip. You're always looking for small, medium, and large in yeah. everything, down to the smallest detail. And so mm -hmm. it's really cool to see, even with, uh, like you mentioned, like the lines. You have some sort of like small, medium, and large thicknesses mm -hmm. that you're playing with here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Man, Lindsay is on the ball. Oh, man. <laughs> Got a Tangle fan. So, seriously, we watch it on repeat with my nieces. Awesome. All right. Are we going to have to disqualify Lindsay from answering? No, I think, <laughs> I think I have one that will stump even her. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's go for it. Okay, Lindsay. Uh, what scene in Tangled 
does Pinocchio show up in? Ooh. The little wooden boy himself is actually entangled. But where does he show up? We've got some radio silence on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> like, mic drop moment. <laughs> Fully rendered CG Pinocchio <laughs> is entangled. And I'll tell you why. Why is that? Uh, because the visual style of the movie mm -hmm. and the way the buildings were designed were directly inspired by how they were caricatured and drawn in Pinocchio. Okay. So Lindsay has an answer. Oh my gosh. I believe it's in the tavern with all the criminals. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to buy her a $30 mood card for that one. <laughs> That's incredible. That's pretty good. She yes. knows. She, she knows. knows. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay is a wizard. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. So funny. Yes. Well, props to you. <laughs> you have won the day. That's pretty good. Yes. Um, there was another um, another Brian on the chat, and he said yeah. something about um, was it Jack Pumpkinhead from Oz? Oh yes. So uh, that's the other one which I had forgotten about that character uh, named Jack Pumpkinhead in the movie Return to Oz. Do you remember that movie? Mm -mm. That was like in the 80s. And I mean, I, I have I have to, to divulge a secret. Uh -oh. I actually grew up without TV. Oh, well, And so my yeah. knowledge of like, I grew up in the, like the like I was born in the early 80s. Uh -huh. So like my knowledge of like pop culture from the 80s right, to like right. the mid 90s is like effectively zero. Oh, right, right. <laughs> it's all good. You're just playing catch up. <laughs> That's fine. Well, there was a movie in the 80s that Disney actually made, live action movie called Return to Oz. And it's super creepy. Uh, and uh, Feruza Balk, the actress uh, from The Craft, she was mm -hmm. actually Dorothy in it. And there was this huge character uh, that wasn't the scarecrow, but this pumpkin-headed guy. And his mm. name was Jack. And um, I, think, I think I had repressed that memory <laughs> in the back of my head. And then when I started drawing this, I'm like, oh, that must be where I where I got where the got idea it, from. Yeah. Um, Do you ever start drawing characters if it's for a movie or for whatever, and you realize it like you're you're subconsciously pulling from like other characters? I think so. I think mm -hmm. that happens, and it's something you have to be like careful about, you know, um, especially if you're doing it for like a bigger studio and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of hard because. You know, like how they say with music, there's really only 12 mm -hmm. notes and it's yeah. about rearranging yeah. all of that. And, and the same, I think, is true for art and certainly animation. There's tropes and everything. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you just got to balance it out. Yeah. All right, I'm looking for more, more, more trivia. Okay. Um... Some of these are kind of easy. Oh, mm -hmm. I saw one up here. All right. So let's go back to um, Wreck-It Ralph. Yes. All right. So uh, the world um, built in Sugar Rush is actually built out of real candy. Mm. True or false? That's a good, that's a good question. That's a good question. I, I know the answer. Yeah. I'm really enjoying how the uh, there there's like some bubbles behind us on the stream. Yes. And they're matching the color of auto. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cool, right? It's almost like you guys planned it. I know. Um, I'm also going to add, like, again, to your small, medium, and large mm -hmm. thing, like smaller details, like mud on oh, the boots, yeah. right, with, with a thinner line. And I'm more angled just to give it that dried mm -hmm, look. Like mm -hmm. it's like crusted on. Yeah, like, lived in it. sort of thing. Again, these are all details that, you know, really help. And how we talked about yesterday, like when a professional is looking at newer artist work, mm -hmm. the stuff we look for that like separates you from like amateur to pro, mm -hmm. it's stuff like this where you're just putting in these little storytelling details. Mm -hmm. Uh, because that's the thing, storytelling is in every aspect of art. It's not just storyboards. Right. Um, and so I think part of the reason why my drawings are so successful and engage audiences online 
is because I put that little extra layer of storytelling mm -hmm. and that extra level of charm and um, it pays off in the end. But that only comes from like doing reference yeah. and research and all And do that. those details evolve over time? Do they start sort of like slowly finding their way into all of the work or they, or is it kind of, they change every time? Uh, they, they become somewhat consistent. Like, uh, much like how I've gotten to know when I draw Otto, how uh -huh. to draw all his suckers. Right. Um, like with Jasper, I always know like, okay, don't forget the mud on the boots. Right. So it becomes kind of like the character's model. Um, and, uh, but as you're coming up with a character or maybe just doodling in your sketchbook, try to think of like, okay, this is great, good shapes, all that sort of yeah. thing. Now, how can I engage the storytelling yeah. of it? Man, I like those boots. Yeah, right? <laughs> I want them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe without the mud. Go to BrianKessinger.com. They're available. <laughs> available right now. In all sizes. You need to partner with like some leather company or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Doc Martens is going to sponsor my... Jasper, Jasper boots. <laughs> Jasper boots. Another fun uh, detail I like to put on these are the little pull tabs. Oh, yeah. Right? So you yep. can imagine him having to hike them up in the morning. Mm -hmm. Or maybe does, does Red Wing, do they do boots? Oh, it feels like Jasper would have like, yes, a red wing. Totally. Oh, I would love that. Cool. All right. So I, I didn't. I think a couple people a couple tried people to answer the yep. candy thing. So the model was made out of candy, apparently. Yes. Out of real candy. Yeah. They once they designed it. Uh, uh, Lorelai Beauvais was mm -hmm. our, one of our visual development artists. Mm -hmm. She did all this great candy art. Uh, based on the Gaudi style of architecture, architecture in Spain. Okay. Uh, because she's from Spain. Oh. And again, that's like a ex perfect example of like how taking real world stuff yep. as your basis to then put fantasy elements on top of. So mm -hmm. her growing up in Spain knew of this type of architecture that was a lot of like sweeping lines. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Very cool. Uh, and then uh, Brittany Lee, uh, I think it was her, who actually recreated it? Yeah, and made so this, said Brittany. Right? Yeah, Brittany in this uh, diorama. Oh wow! That was huge, about the size of this desk. Oh my gosh! Uh, using real candy, real macaroons. That would be hard to stay away from. Well, yeah, <laughs> we're like, this is all well and good, but wait till the ants find it, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> but um, it was in the studio for a long time. Yeah, and then Don't when the eat it no, then. the movie was done, <laughs> and you could take a hammer to that oh thing. Oh my it was gosh! Yeah. Rock solid. All right, see ya, Kendrick. Thanks for joining us. Kendrick's heading out. Thank you, Kendrick. It's 3 a.m. I think it's time to Oh, yeah, get some time sleep. for bed. <laughs> Have a good night. Oh, we know some people that know uh, the Gaudi style of architecture. I'm not oh, super cool. familiar with it. Oh, you should look it up. It's very surreal. Uh, and um, it's. Oh, yeah, wow. Super cool. If I remember right, too, it's where the term Gaudi comes from. Yeah. You know, people are like, oh, that's so gaudy. Uh -huh. And it's a mispronunciation of Gaudi, yeah. uh, which is that kind of flamboyant architecture yep. style. That's so. super cool. The stuff you learn uh -huh. <laughs> working in an animation studio. <laughs> so do you try to keep uh, Jasper's colors similar to Otto and Victoria, like kind of the muted steampunk style? Uh, no, he's a lot more vibrant. And you'll okay. see here as I color him in. Um, that he is a lot more saturated. And again, that's just something, uh, another thing we artists have to think about is, you know, diversifying our projects and mm -hmm. our styles. And, and, and so for, to that end, I wanted Jasper to feel different than Otto and Victoria. Yeah, for sure. I want to do just a little call out. Um, we mentioned this at the beginning. Brian and I are going to be reviewing portfolios. We'll be going to yes. space for that. That's right. Yes. Our, uh, <laughs> space reviews. <laughs> space portfolios. Awesome. Uh, so make sure and submit your portfolio. We've got 40 minutes left before we go into that. We want to see what you have. Yes, please do. I'm excited for that. That'll be super fun. I, I am too. I, I love looking at people's work and mm -hmm. encouraging them. You know, I, I was... So grateful to have professionals share their insights with me when I was young. Yeah. Uh, so any chance I get to kind of pay that back or pay it forward, mm -hmm. um, I love. Very cool. And if you're in the chat and you have questions for Brian, uh, please ask or questions about Fresco. Yep. Question, 
whatever you want. Just yeah, ask us. We're here. And if we don't have the answer, we'll make it up. Oh, definitely. <laughs> That's all I've been doing the last two days. <laughs> Um, I'm going to do one thing here. So, you know, actually, uh, hold. I'm going to do a shadow pass. So now that I'm done okay. with like the the um, uh, line art on Jasper, uh, I'm going to go do a secondary kind of inking pass cool. to indicate kind of the shadows. And the reason why I haven't inked the lantern yet is I'm actually going to use a colored ink line Ooh. Uh, to make it look more illuminated. So I'll show you how I do that. And as you mentioned yesterday, shadows should not be black. Right? That's right. Uh, but in the instance of inking, uh, I'm going to do, uh, I'll show you right here. It's just kind of secondary okay, shadows like that sort of thing that give it more that comic book look. Cool. Um, but when you're doing coloring shadows, coloring never shadows, black. never black. Because it kills. The... Yeah. Gross. Why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> and you had some fun trivia yesterday. What what movie was it where the... Uh, oh, yeah. Aladdin. 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 Yeah. So take a look at Aladdin again, the animated one. Um, and look at how vibrant Agrabah is, the backgrounds. Just watch it for the backgrounds, mm -hmm. especially the um, um, a Whole New World sequence. Look at the skies. Like, it's a nighttime scene, uh -huh. but it's all blues and violets. Very cool. and Yeah, it's great for color theory. Yeah. All the black was hidden. Mm -hmm, yeah, <laughs> our director stole it all away. Yeah. Um, I saw a question. It looks like it disappeared. Has anyone used... Oh, there we go. Uh, Axel says, has anyone used Fresco on the iPad mini? So Fresco mm. works on any iPad that supports an Apple Pencil. So that's a good way of knowing whether or not Fresco will work on your iPad. Uh, so now that I'm kind of happy with the inking overall, another thing I like to do is turn the visibility off on my rough layer. And then by doing that, it's a good test to mm. see like, Okay, did I miss any spots? Mm -hmm. uh, but also, how is it holding together as a drawing on itself? Mm -hmm. And right now, it's feeling uh, a little noisy. Like, mm. uh, a lot of the lines are very similar. Okay. So I'm going to go through and, like, pick out certain lines and big shapes and just thicken the outlines of it. Oh, looks like you're on your hidden Oh, there you go. Back to the ink. Um, and one way to kind of help differentiate is things that are closer to the camera are going to have thicker lines. Okay. So this leg is closer to the viewer mm -hmm. uh, than uh, the, his back leg. So I'm going to give that more of a thicker outline. Gotcha. So we've got two questions for you. Oh, yes, please. What about, Kerwin's asking, what about uh, Jasper's left hand? Oh, yeah. Where did that go? Right. <laughs> so exactly. And there you go. Perfect example. So um, I have it here. Uh, I have it kind of across his leg here, but we need to put the fingers there we go. in there so that we know um, that his hand is kind of on his lap. Does that ever happen to you where you're so engrossed in the details that you forget like a, a major part? A major part yes. Of it? <laughs> yes. And uh, I think there's a couple drawings in, because um, I did the comic series for, for Marvel called Groot. It was oh. Groot's first uh, standalone comic oh, series. Oh, cool. And um, it was an amazing experience, but really uh, exhausting because I was working with Moana full time. Oh, my gosh. So I was storyboard artist on Moana during the day and then would come home and uh, draw <laughs> and color and ink pages for Marvel. I don't know Marvel. how you did it. Uh, I don't either, and I'll never do it again. Uh, but thank you, Marvel, for having me. Uh, I do just covers for them now. Mm -hmm. That seems to be like the happy medium. Yeah. But um, I'm so grateful that I did it because um, uh, just that ability to like draw comics, mm -hmm. it's like a good skill. But uh, there were a couple times where I have forgotten to draw like Groot's hand <laughs> or Groot's like arm and uh, it went to print. <laughs> but uh, so you, but you, you, well, it's called an Easter an egg. An Easter egg. That's right. That's right. And it'll grow back. So it's not that big of a deal, but it does happen. So mm -hmm. uh, great reminder to always kind of take a step back. Um, and it's actually why this is another thing I do. I tend to have like three or four projects going on mm, at once mm -hmm. just so I can step away 
from what I'm working on yeah. and come back to it with fresh eyes. Yeah. Because uh, if we had taken a break and I came back, I would have noticed that hand was missing. Right. So um, see, it's on yep. purpose. There you go. <laughs> Teachable <laughs> moment. Um, and then we had another question. Um, what types, what all types of drawing software do you use? Uh, I use uh, uh, this program I'm using a lot more. Photoshop I use um, a lot. That's what I learned on. I kind of taught mm. myself because um, when Disney was going from all hand drawn to all CG, mm -hmm. there was this kind of moment yeah. where it was like, but wait. <laughs> yeah. I and, and it happened on Tarzan. So I had spent my whole time learning how to do 2D animation. Oh, man. And then I was so fortunate, though, that Tarzan was one of the first movies to have CG elements in it. Uh -huh. So I got in on that team, but I had to learn on the fly, on the job, how to do digital That's stuff. That's a big learning curve. Yeah, and thankfully, Photoshop was there, and I could learn how to do that stuff. Um, Even still learning Photoshop. I mean, I remember the he, first he, thing I designed in Photoshop I had no, I mean, it was, I had no concept of like resolution. Oh, right, And I just right, started right. a document size and I spent like three or four hours designing this thing. And oh, then no. I went to print it out and it was like this oh, thing. Oh no, <laughs> oh, terrible. But I think everyone learns that at some point what yeah. the concept of resolution is. Yeah, so th those are the two I use mainly. Cool. Jesse says, I am Groot. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Man, it was so fun. And again, shout out to my amazing wife, Jenny, uh, who helped me during that because uh, once I was done inking it, uh, while I went to work, she would be at home and she did all the flat colors for it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. she could go in and place oh, all the colors. Right. And then I could then take those files and add the shadows and yeah. highlights. And, and the flats, I know a lot of, of comic artists who pay people to do their flats. Yes, yeah, yeah. So Because uh, it, it does take a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. But... Um, honestly, like sometimes I'm the type of person I kind of enjoy production work like that. Uh huh. Uh huh. If you need sort of like a mind list, yeah, mind list task. Yeah, my wife she uh, was a layout artist, but before that she was a technical director, mm -hmm. so she can turn on that kind yeah. of like okay, busy work yep. sort yep. of thing. Yeah. Uh, Jeff says, I still spend most of my time looking through the pages of the book, The Illusion of Life, a great oh. book showing the work of original Disney animation masters. Yeah, that, that book is incredible. And it was written by Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson. Mm -hmm. And uh, my copy at home doesn't have a cover anymore. It was a hardcover oh, wow. book, but I just <laughs> read it well so loved. much. Yeah, <laughs> uh, But you can get it. They reprint it a lot. So you can find okay. it on Amazon. Uh, it is kind of a necessity of a book if you're looking to get into animation. Yeah. So, and we've got a couple more questions. Great. Um, speaking of transition to digital, have you had to deal with any other major technical shifts in your industry since then? Um, no, that's kind of been the big one. The biggest one? Yeah. Um, they're starting to get into VR mm. um, very tepidly. Yeah. Uh, which is going to make for a lot more work for everyone, right? Like it's not going to be as big of a change mm -hmm. um, as 2D to 3D. Yeah. But as film um, frame rates increase, yep. like if that starts to take off and people do want to see 60 frames for a second, 120 frames oh for gosh. a second. That's that, a lot. That's a lot because then animators have to do three or four times the amount of work because they are posing... Every, every frame yeah it's not i think there's a misconception with cg mm. that um you know you do the key poses and then and then just kind of transition yeah and the computer does that for you but it's very much i liken it more to stop motion where you have your puppet and they're just going in and turning every oh frame oh my gosh so oh my gosh. That's, that's 24 frames per second yeah that's a lot right oh my so gosh. imagine if it and vr the same thing because with VR, we can't control where the viewer is looking. Mm -hmm. So it's. So you have even more work. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because you have to cover all the blank spots. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, that's nuts. I can't imagine. Mm -hmm. I, um, I met with uh, one of the storyboard artists for Archer. Oh, cool. Them. Yes. Um, they're based in Atlanta and they oh, really? do all of their animation in After after Effects. Right, And yes. they were telling me that it will take like a couple weeks, one person working for like two weeks to animate 30 seconds. That's like about it's right. it's so long. That's about right. 
that's where those production people that I mentioned yesterday come in handy. Yeah. The, where they can help with quotas and scheduling. And mm -hmm. flowing. Because when you have a movie that is, you know, 90 minutes long. Yeah. Uh, you start to run into those, those issues. Yeah. Um, and so the other question kind of about scheduling, uh, Voodoo Val is asking if you use any apps to stay organized or how do you stay organized with all your stuff now oh, that you're that's, doing yeah. sort of freelance? That's a good question. Um, I don't use any apps. Um, I just kind of keep it in my head. Mm -hmm. I am pretty organized. So yeah. um, I kind of, it's mainly just emails, like keeping like <laughs> folders clean. Do you use any empty space in Jasper's head to help? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Lots of storage in there. Uh, at least four gigs. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I just kind of help. And then of course, Jenny helps a lot too mm -hmm. because she runs uh, a lot of the, the business side of things. So she can always keep me on task. Mm -hmm. Don't forget about that commission. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it's, it's not too bad. Yeah, that's nice. So Jesse, yes, the archer. Um. Yes, the archer. <laughs> the archer. And then um, he's also asking, do you have an easy reference list of what you've worked on? Uh, yeah, if you go to, um, I do need to update my IMDB, but it's it's pretty solid if you go there. I, I think it's just the auto-generated one. Yep. Um, but basically I can tell people I've worked on every movie from Tarzan to Frozen 2, with the exception of Mulan, Lilo and Stitch, and Frozen 1. Wow. So that's kind of my like elevator pitch. <laughs> uh, because- uh, Let me tell you the movies I haven't worked yeah, on. Yeah, right. that will be easier. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that was kind of a humble brag. But um, it's, uh, I didn't work on Lilo and Stitch and Mulan because those were both done at the Florida studio. Okay. Disney had a studio in Florida. And then uh, Frozen, I was working on Big Hero 6 okay. at the time. So. Gotcha. See ya, Chad. He's got to run. So Bye, th Chad. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Cool. I think the inking on him is done. That's looking nice. Thank you very much. I'm going to bring up my line layer again. And now I'm going to use um, kind of a green color. Marcus is asking if you like 60 frames movies. Um, not really. I saw, what did I watch? I watched The Hobbit. I went to see The Hobbit in 60 frames per second. And um, is this showing up? Yeah, yeah. barely. Um, I went and saw it. And where I thought it succeeded the most was in uh, daytime shots outdoors. Uh, because then, like in some of those helicopter shots, of them all running through Middle Earth. I was like, wow, this feels dimensional. This feels very real. But anytime it was like a close up on mm -hmm. someone uh, or, or a fake set, like a, a built set, mm -hmm. um, it kind of fell apart for oh, me. Oh, interesting. Um, but we'll see. I wanted to go see because uh, Ang Lee did Gemini Man with Will Smith. Mm -hmm. And apparently, he did that at 120 frames per second. Oh, wow. And there's only 14 theaters in America that can handle that. Yeah. And one of them was down by me, and I was hoping to go make it, but. Oh. So Corinne was saying Gemini Man was pretty jarring. The 20 frames per second experience was off-putting. Yeah, I can only imagine, because 60 was, like, nuts. So double that. Yeah. And be said everything looks like a set and not a real place. That's interesting. 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 Yeah. So fun fact. Fresco, before it was Fresco, was called Project Gemini. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, nice. And the reason being is yes. because we were combining pixels and vectors into oh, one app. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty incredible, by the way. Um, I haven't shown any of the uh, vector brushes here, but they are here and they're really nice. Mm -hmm. And I can say there are more coming. Oh, cool. So right now there's only seven, I believe. Right. Um, but we're going to be changing um, a couple things to allow you to sort of like manage the taper on them. Nice. Um, the head and the tails and do a little bit more controls. So um, more vector love. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. Now, what made you choose the, the bright green? I'm kind of curious. Yeah, so um, you'll see when I, when I color it in with the yellow. Mm -hmm. It'll just feel a little more um, otherworldly than to just use a darker yellow line to 
color in a yellow object. Okay. Um, it's just personal preference. Gotcha. And I may tweak it mm -hmm. later um, if it's not working, but uh, it's just a way to kind of give it a little more Halloween-y feel. Gotcha. Uh, is with that green light. It basically, <clears throat> it comes from Scooby-Doo. Uh, because uh, whenever they were doing like creepy ghostly stuff in Scooby-Doo, they'd mm -hmm. always outline it with green line. And so it's something, as a Halloween character, I tried to carry over. Gotcha. Um, I just want to give a shout out. We've got our portfolio submission deadline in 25 minutes. Okay. Submit your portfolio, please. Go to the tab at the very top that says portfolio review and it will get sent to me and then we will review it. We'll we need more. We need more portfolios to review. Send them along. Send them our way. We're going to space. That's right. <laughs> and we're not coming back. So <laughs> send them along. Even if you're drawing along, right? And mm -hmm. you want to send a drawing yeah, for, yeah. for a critique, right? Sh share what you're drawing. Yeah. Actually, I'm, I am kind of curious what people are drawing right Me now. Me too. If Me they're too. drawing along with us. So there we have the finished inked drawing. Nice. Uh, and then I'm going to go in. As, oh, let's play with the rake brushes, right? Oh, yeah. For the little hay. Uh, at the bottom. I'm going to do it on its own layer um, and uh, that way we can play with it. And I saw the rakes were here. All oh. rakes. Oh, cool. Rake texture. Let's try that. And we'll go back to black. Love this color picker, by the way. It's really oh, thank nice. You. Um, Oh, that's cool. Let's bring it down. Great texture. Oh, nice. Oh, that is really, that yeah. looks really good. Yeah, right? I love it. It's got like a newsprint feel mm -hmm, to it. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the rake brushes are really smooth and some of that might be the rough. Right, right. The more rough rake. Yeah, I think this one was rough textured was yeah. what it was called. Oh, so. yeah, I really like that. Yeah, look at that. That's cool. See, trying something new. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. And what's nice about that too, right? Again, just as far as graphic design for um, an illustration goes, mm -hmm. like how pleasing is that, that we have a bunch of smooth lines that are our character, and then we just supplement that with yeah. some noise, and it kind of grounds it in yeah, a really pleasing, contrast. pleasing way, yep. right? Whereas if I were to just go with the same line brush, mm -hmm. um, in fact, I may save this that one really nice. for some shading later as I color cool. him in. So I'm gonna favorite it so that uh, you can go your favorites. Yeah, and, and that's, a, right there. that's a fun trick because there are a lot of built-in brushes oh and gosh. if you add your yeah. own, there's even more. And so uh -huh. you can just tap the star beside any brush and it automatically favorites it so you have quick access to it at any time. Yeah, love that. Yeah. Kerwin has a beginner question. Can you expand or contract the canvas? It's not locked to your file setup size. And you can. So if you go to the gear icon yes. um, and you tap on the size, Oh, you actually nice. have the option to either put in your own custom size or you can choose from one of the presets. Great, great. And then you can resize your canvas. So. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Great. Well, done. Perfect. I'm going to make a new layer here. And now we'll go back to watercolors because I love the wet brushes. <laughs> yeah, we saw those yesterday. Yeah, these are so cool, you guys. Yeah. And Melanie, uh, she's new to Fresco. It's only a mobile app, and that is actually not correct. Um, it's available mm -hmm. on Windows, so you can get it on the Surface Pro 4, 5, and 6. You can get it on the Surface Studio 1 and 2 and the Waka Mobile Studio Pro. So you have Amazing. multiple options. I like uh, uh, Kerwin says that he should be the Green Lantern. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I missed that opportunity. Uh, let's see. So now we'll go here and we'll bring out this kind of Nice pumpkin-y orange color. And um, start having fun. So Nico Graphics and anyone else who's interested in submitting your portfolio, please, please do. You just go to the portfolio review at the very top of the chat pod um, and follow that. Um, and then also right below portfolio review is the Adobe Live survey. 
please take that if you haven't yet. You can get entered to win a year of Creative Cloud for free, which is always That's really, really nice. Yeah. So here you see, you know, this is showing up. Yeah, just, mm -hmm. it, just like watercolor, tapping in the areas you want a little more saturated, blocking in the areas. Pretty incredible. Mm, the that's more a nice pumpkin color. Yeah, right? Makes me hungry for pumpkin pie. I know, right? <laughs> Don't tell Jasper. <laughs> for those of you in the U.S. who are yes. getting ready for Thanksgiving. That's right. Um, yeah, I just love that the more pressure you put, the more saturated it gets. Just pretty great. And notice it's mimicking the surface tension aspects of watercolor. That is to say, wherever the water is, the paint, the pigment's just going to stay in the area that's wet. It didn't bleed even though I was just tapping it in. It's staying in those areas. There's a little bit of bleed that comes mm -hmm. through, but that's actually kind of nice um, because it gives um, just more of the organic feeling to it. Mm -hmm. So we do have a couple people asking about how they can follow your work. Oh, thanks. Yeah, um, I'm I'm around. Uh, if you go <laughs> to um, Brian Kessinger uh, on Instagram, I'm just at Brian Kessinger. Uh, the tricky part is remembering it's just one S in Kessinger. And then that's my um, uh, account on Twitter. Uh, also uh, on Facebook, I have an artist page. That's the art of Brian Kessinger. But you can find cool. me everywhere else. And I just got a Behance account. Oh, nice. So um, I'm there as well as Brian Kessinger. So I make it easy. Um, but yeah, I, I'm around. But I post, I would say, mostly on Instagram is where I'm the most kind of regular posting. And that's where you can like hear all the announcements about what I'm doing, where I'm going to be. Uh, and when new stuff goes on sale, like prints and stuff. On my website. You have store. books on your on your mm -hmm, website that you can mm -hmm. buy. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna answer a few quick questions about Fresco here. So thanks okay. everyone who's been chiming in. So Adobe Fresco works on any iPad that works with an Apple Pencil. So just keep that in mind. That's kind of an easy way. Um, and then someone is asking how you activate canvas rotation. So you can actually, mm -hmm. if you're looking to flip the canvas, um, that is in the settings in the gear icon. You can flip canvas horizontal and vertical. Mm -hmm. And then if you're just wanting to rotate, you can just rotate the canvas with your fingers. Yeah. So it's really easy. That's turned on by default. And we have several people who say they're now officially stalking you online. Oh, yay. <laughs> Thank you, I think. We'll assume that's a good thing. Yes. Thank you, I think. <laughs> No, sincerely, that means a lot. Um, part of the reason why I've been able to kind of leave the nest of Disney, which was a big decision after I was working there for 22 years. And, um, but part of the reason why I could was because, um, you know, my personal work started taking off and people like you following and engaging. Uh, so I very much appreciate when people can follow me online and, and support my work. Yeah. So Jordan is asking if you ever go to conventions and sell prints. And fun fact, so Brian and I actually met a few years ago. Uh -huh. I went down to Disney Animation Studios, and that's where we first met. Yes. I still have a drawing of Otto on my iPad that he did. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> and Adobe Sketch, for those of you who used to use that. Yes, yes. Um, and then we also uh, were hanging out with Brian at Lightbox. You had a table there, and you were selling mm -hmm. some of your work. And then yep. Brian came to the Adobe Drawing Lounge and did some live drawing, which was super cool. Yeah. Um, so yes, I do go to conventions and that sort of thing. Um, not as much as I would like to, uh, just because uh, day job gets in the way a little bit. But um, I am around. I, I typically go to San Diego Comic Con. Mm. That one I'm at. That's a good one. You mentioned Lightbox. That was a great convention. That was super cool. Yeah. So and really affordable for people to go to. Yeah. Which yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah, so there were so many like I kept like every time I turned around, I was like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, yeah. there's that person, there's that person. It yeah. was super cool. It was nuts. So I'll definitely be making that one a habit because um, it was so great. And that was just the first year. So mm -hmm. can't imagine to see where it, where it goes from there. Yeah, I think it was like $50 if yeah. you wanted to go for one day. And it was three days long, I think. Mm -hmm. And like $135 for all three days, which is right. like. That's crazy. And that got you into everything. Everything. So panels, all that stuff included in there. Yeah. Uh, pretty, pretty nice. I'm curious if anyone in the chat was at Lightbox, actually. Oh, yeah. Was anyone there? So 
So do you typically use the same colors for Jasper's clothes? Yes, yeah, okay. he's always wearing his. And never changes. Never changes, and uh, it's a little bit of that old Americana feel of mm -hmm. that, you know, red, white, and blue sort of thing. It's, again, just tipping to that nostalgia. Yeah, totally. Um, and then he's got his very nice um, green and blue scarf. Oh, yeah. Um, trade my green and blue scarf. Just kind of block that in. Nice. Like so. So how, like, what do you, what, what techniques do you use to control the watercolors? Is it, are you using pressure right now? Yeah, very much pressure and very much like less is more. Like, um, I'm okay with these white areas because mm -hmm. um, I'm going to like solidify it later. But right now it's just kind of getting everything in a general tone uh, and the local color of everything. And then going through and considering like overall tone and shading and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But I've always been very inspired by, if you ever look at the art books for uh, any of the Miyazaki movies, mm -hmm. like Ponyo or um, Totoro, those movies, um, let's see, a little, a little too much bleeding. So see that bleeding I'm getting yeah. in there. What I'm gonna do to stop that is I'm actually gonna use this great thing called dry layer, and that dries all the paint on that layer. And now when I go in, uh, you can see it's not affecting, nice. which is super it's like awesome. Like someone took a blow dryer and just yeah, automatically right. dried it. Uh, this is nice too, in case you guys don't know, if you press and hold over any color, it instantly is the eyedropper. Mm -hmm. So you can go back and keep that pattern yeah. up. Press and hold with your finger. Press and hold with your finger, yes. Uh, so anyway, the art books from uh, the Ghibli movies are, uh, or Ghibli, um, they always do these great pencil sketches mm -hmm. and then just supplement them with light watercolor washes. Oh, cool. And um, it's a really appealing look. Mm -hmm. And that's how I kind of try to treat my watercolor. Oh, nice. Um, Jesse is asking if you can spot dry or just dry the layer. And you just dry the layer. So mm. um, that's how it works. And then he's also asking when Jasper gets an idea, do, do his eyes light up or are they always lit? <laughs> They're always lit. <laughs> Hashtag uh, lit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're always uh, always illuminated. Mm -hmm. And Paloma says, she, uh, Paloma thinks that Jasper is also a little bit hipster. Yes, I could see that. <laughs> He's got a pretty awesome Those record boots. collection. I know, right? Man, that infinity scarf. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> got it going. Uh, also with watercolors, it's important to work uh, light to dark as opposed to gouache, acrylic, or oils, anything that's more of an opaque medium, mm -hmm. because um, it, it, it really is, operates in washes. So notice I colored his gloves, uh, the string, and the straw the same color. That's because um, now I'm gonna dry that layer again and use a darker color for the gloves. Cool. And then you can kind of build that up yeah. a little bit more to get your separation because you can't take a lighter yeah. color on top of it. Right. And you can't erase, which we showed yesterday, but that gives you a different... Yes, like for something like that, like I would erase this overspill, mm -hmm. um, which again, you can't do with watercolor, but right. you can do it here. Yeah. And it's also going to help with his eyes, right? Because then we oh, pop yeah. those out. Nice. Right? Yep. And then his little mouth. Happy little mouth. Yeah. <laughs> and it really starts to come to life, you know? Yeah. And so, Christina, it looks like you just joined. Welcome. Um, Hello. This is Brian's character, Jasper the Pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Jasper is a scarecrow who is really, really bored. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to give a little shout out. We've got 10 minutes until Brian and I shoot off to space and do portfolio reviews. Yes. So. Go up to the top of the chat pod and tap on portfolio review and submit your portfolios because we want to see them. I just heard they're fueling the rocket now. So I know. Um, and yeah, your portfolios or even if it's drawing you're working on right now, drawing alongside, show us and we'll yeah, give you, we'd love give to you see some it. feedback. We'll be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> so now we get those nice kind of 
our Red Wing sponsored boots. That's right. <laughs> In here. And this is going to be fun. Watch this. So I'm going to block in the top parts. Oh, yeah. And then we'll bring that muddy stuff in there. I also look at um, a lot of Calvin and Hobbes watercolors because mm -hmm. uh, the artist Bill Watterson would color his Sunday strips with watercolor. I believe watercolor. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. And, um, man, so charming. There's something about watercolor yeah. that lends itself well to illustration. Mm hmm and um, especially for someone like me, who I really like the drawing part right. and the line art. So um, I feel like watercolor is a good supplement to mm -hmm. that. So now we'll bring the <laughs> um, mud in. Kathleen thinks they look more like fry boots. Oh. That's, a, that's <laughs> actually a pretty good point. Uh huh. <laughs> and, and Jesse, he's gorgeous. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Good dad pun. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, so good. So now look how that will let that oh, that's texture, really nice. right? Like just kind of blend in there. So we support it with the line, but then we mm -hmm. can give it more of an organic feel. Mm -hmm. Now I'm curious, you sort of like drew the line for where the mud is, uh -huh. how are you, how, and, but the watercolor is sort of bleeding over. Yeah. What's your strategy for that? Do you kind of leave it that way? Or? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. It's just a way um, to kind of break it up a little mm -hmm. um, and gives it um, more of an animated feel, right? That you can just have that line in there mm -hmm. and then go in there yeah, and splotch like it up. Makes it more organic. Because I think if I would have kept it within that line, um, it would have felt a little too sterile. Gotcha. Which when I'm doing digital art, I'm always being careful of that it still has a warmth. Mm -hmm. um, to it. It's sort of a natural organic quality. Yeah. All right. I'm going to do one more trivia. Oh, nice. I think we're going to do a true or false. Okay. Again. For Wreck-It Ralph. Okay. So, in Dune, Dune, 1977, Game Central Station, Yes. no character moves in the same direction. Mm. Do you know the answer to that one? Yes. Okay. It's, it's worded strangely, but... That's because I, I took the fact and then I oh, changed sorry. the word. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I thought that that's how they wrote it. Real talk. Yeah. <laughs> this is Brooke trivia. No, no. <laughs> I mean, it's fantastic. And yes, I know the answer. Okay. <laughs> I'll see if anyone out there knows it. <laughs> yeah, I really do love how the rake brush just added some nice texture to the clean yeah. lines. Yeah, and I'm going to bring it back when I start doing that color pencil mm -hmm. kind of phase over it. Because, um, yeah, I think that's really great. So now that I've done this dark here, I'm going to um, warm it up a little because it's kind of a cool brown. So I'm going to saturate it up, bring in a little yellow, mm -hmm. and then do this sort of thing. It's super subtle, but... Cool, yeah. One of those things that you Man, can... Lindsay to the punch. Yes. True question mark. Jesse's wondering if it's falsely true. Anthony oh, yeah. says true. Spencer's asking to repeat. No two characters on Wreck It Ralph um, and Game Central Station move the same way. Is that worded in a better way? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I should not be writing true. No, no. <laughs> Um, Sergio say, says, I have a 2014 iPad. Will Fresco work on it? And if your iPad supports Apple Pencil, then yes. That's the easiest way to, mm -hmm. to know. And we've got port, 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 bleh, I still can't talk. I've been talking <laughs> for two hours. It's still coming up. Um, in five minutes, we've got portfolio oh, reviews. Awesome. So submit your portfolios, please. Yes, we want to see. This is and as Brian done. said, we'll be nice. Yes. Uh, now we'll go in here and do the lantern. So that kind of yellow I was talking about. Oh, I didn't even get to my bolt trivia that I wanted to get to. Oh yeah. Well, we'll have to. Do okay. That. So the answer to um, uh, the answer to the question is true. Yes. Every character moves in a different direction. Yes, yes, yes. 
So congrats to everyone. We've got a, quite a few people who got that one. And the story behind that is um, that they wanted to let the uh, animation style of the video game that the character can comes through mm. dictate how they move. Gotcha. So like if it's an 8-bit side-scroller game, the characters are only going to move uh -huh. in. Uh, so that's like the Nice Landers, which were the little guys that live in the apartment building. Mm -hmm. They all moved with a really staccato kind of movement yep. because yep. that's how their game was animated. And uh, if I, I think it's true, I don't think they were rendered with motion blur either. So like most characters are rendered yeah. with motion blur to get that nice feel. But um, I think the Nice Landers were rendered without it. And if they were, it was very minimal mm -hmm. to support that sort of oh, thing. Oh, that's super cool. So yeah, everyone moved in their own specific animation. Yeah. Jordan's saying it would be really cool if a movie was made in this style, the style of Jasper using watercolors with ink lines. Oh, and you just you. said that Jasper is, you have yes, a, a there's, short there's animation. Yes, there's animated short uh, in progress. And uh, I don't know that we're going to go as far as... Um, a full watercolor look, mm -hmm. but it's gonna look very traditional. That's super cool. Yeah. So, is this stuff showing up? Oh, I know why. Because I was on the rake brush. Gotcha. So I'm gonna ask a couple more questions from Bolt. Yeah. And the fun fact was that Brian's entire family was featured in the credits on Bolt because you had both of your sons while you were working mm -hmm. on. A son and daughter. Okay. Yeah. Son and, I'm uh -huh. sorry. Son and daughter. I'm sorry. That's oh, alright. All right. So, what is Bolt's favorite toy? Oh yeah. This is apparently a very popular question. It's called the cakewalk question because it's easy. Oh, like, I, I see. <laughs> Voodoo Val loves the trivia that you guys were all in the credits of a movie. Oh, I awesome. think that was super cool. Oh, man. It, it's, yeah, that's pretty special. Is there a way? Let's see here. Is this the layer? Yeah. Oh. Oh, funny. Okay, bad layer management. <laughs> um, okay. Are you the type of person that names your layers? No, <laughs> I don't. And I pay for it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there a way, if mm -hmm. I were to select this uh, line art uh, uh -huh. and change the color of it? Or um, is that upcoming? Right, yeah, yeah, that's coming up. Mm -hmm. There's not a good way to do that right now, unfortunately, which can be pretty painful. It's all right, so I'm just going to But go. it's coming. I can tell you that that will be coming before the end of the year. Before, awesome. Not before the end of 2019, before the year, end of 2020. Right, right. Which I know could seem like a long ways away, but it's coming, I promise you. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to go. I mean, you could use the fill tool, but it, right. I don't, I'm not a, a big fan crunchy. of the fill tool. Yeah, right. So I'm going to go in here and darken it up just a little bit. Thank you, Paul. Paul says, I made the deadline, got two fresco projects in there. Yeah, we've got oh, one awesome. minute and 30 seconds all to right. submit your portfolio. Yeah, let's see. Stuff. Um, this is almost done, too. So, Bolt's favorite toy was a... Was it a carrot? Yeah, yes. a carrot. Awesome. I was like, oh, shoot. Congrats, Jesse and Melanie. <laughs> Yay, Jesse and Melanie. <laughs> I know, I was thinking, I was like, oh man, should I try to find a piece of trivia that Brian doesn't know? But I don't think that would be possible. Oh, uh, yeah. You have too much of the insider scoop. That's true. That's oh, true. yeah, Kathleen says if you select it, copy it onto a new layer and then lock transparency. That's a good point. Oh, I forgot yeah. about that. That's a good workaround. <laughs> Kerwin says, I want Jasper and Smash Brothers. Oh, yes. <laughs> New Challenger has entered the ring. That'd be yeah. a great one. All right. We've got 30 seconds before 30 we seconds. shoot off into space. Oh, man. I'm so excited. I need to grab my space helmet That's pretty soon. That's right. Sad. That's right. we got to suit up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And while you're at it, um, be sure before the end of the broadcast, take the survey. It's an Adobe Live viewer survey that lets you know what, what you let lets us know what you like. Yes, and please. you have the option to be entered into a drawing to win a year of Creative Cloud for free. Oh, Jordan says maybe ask about something Brian didn't work on, which was like three movies. Oh, like yeah, right, right. There. Uh -huh. All right, we've got two seconds. We'll see you in a bit. See you soon. Oh.
Hello from space. Hello there. Do you think we can open up our masks? Let's, Let's test. see. Is there Check a good the, way oxygen. To test the oxygen. Yep, looks good. <laughs> okay. All right. Phew. What a rush. <laughs> that was fast. What they can't do these days. <laughs> Amazing. Hi, all. Welcome to space. Welcome to space. We've got some spacey portfolios that we're <laughs> going to review here. Awesome. All right. So, first oh, off, nice. we've got Sergio. I think we have Sergio on the chat. Hey, Sergio. Which is nice. Thank you for we, sharing. I'm pretty sure I saw Sergio. Cool. This is awesome work. I love it. Wow. Right off the bat. Let's see. It looks like Sergio is using Photoshop for this. Great. I love the technique. I love how geometric it is while yes. still feeling really painterly. Yeah. Which is nice. Wow. Super strong. Gears of War, right? I think this is a Gears of War piece. Mm -hmm. The colors are really great. I love, I really love how the background is so structured, but it feels like just the way that all the shapes yes. um, are, are working together. It, it feels like a, like a gosh and blur. Mm -hmm. I'm totally like spacing on the. Well, you're in space. So. <laughs> That's why I'm spacing. It, it happens. <laughs> the effects um, of zero G. <laughs> <laughs> cool. It's so great. Yeah, I'm really, really digging this. Yeah. It reminds me of the last scene in mm -hmm. Interstellar where um, in the bookshelves, how everything's kind of like streaky. Yeah. yeah. Check out the detail. Yeah, it's super the... cool. Oh, yeah. I'm curious how long it took, Sergio, if you're on the chat, how long it took you to make yeah. this. Are we seeing? I see Sergio. Lots, lots says, of Sergio yes. love. Yeah, this is so cool. Everyone's loving it in the chat, which is yeah, rightfully very cool so. Style. I have to say too, when you just brought his portfolio up right away, what I dug is how consistent it yep. is and how I get your point of view as an artist. Mm -hmm. Like that's uh, super strong. Yeah, that is really awesome. It looks like uh, Sergio's main tools are um, Illustrator and Photoshop. Mm-hmm. Which is cool. Oh, yeah, I'd I love to hear more about the process, actually. Like, yeah, me too. If you're creating some of the shapes in Illustrator and then going into Photoshop to add some of the texture, because mm -hmm. it looks like there's a lot of noise. Oh, the mm -hmm. Falling water house, lovely. This is amazing. Great work. Yeah, wow. I Yeah, I really just love the use of shapes. Mm -hmm. It's really, really nice. It's like old travel posters, right? Yeah. But like they feel modern at the same time. Yeah, totally. I'm wondering, oh, 10 hours, Sergio said it took for wow. the last piece. Yeah, this is really, really nice. And I love just the noise, the subtle details. Yep. You know, all the nice line work we've talked about, mm -hmm. or you've talked about sort of the small, medium, and large. Oh, yeah. And I really see that happening it's all here there. and all the line work and the yep. sizing. All right, let's look at some more pieces. Oh yeah, totally. Like the like the National Forest posters. Yep, exactly. I forget what artists. Yeah, who did those? Did those, but they're so nice. This is great. Mhm. Mm did a nice job on sort of like the foreground and background. So you've mm -hmm. got the the detail here of the foreground. You see leaves from some of the trees yep. peeking in, and then as you get towards the background, the color changes and sort of the, mm. the amount of detail um, changes. And I really love how the trees mimic actual leaves. Yes. Yeah, the fractal quality of that mm -hmm. is really great. It really great. ties into sort of like th these leaves in the foreground tie into the tree style in the background. If you look up an artist named Ivan Earl, he was a style uh, style director for Sleeping Beauty, the old animated film. And he does a lot of this, your foreground leaves, um, that kind of lacy silhouette mm -hmm. against big bold shapes is super appealing. And he would do that a lot. Back yeah, in the this day. is really nice. Dream cabins. I've got to tell you, I yep. want to stay in this cabin. Yep, Airbnb I'm the, the heck out of that. For, oh, oh nice. yay, rough sketch. Awesome. Yeah, this is really lovely. Great. So it looks like certain, and I'm totally speaking for Sergio right now. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so his processes, um, I really like seeing the process work. Yeah, me and you too. mentioned that yesterday, actually. Right, right. Um, about how you went on a, on a trip to Ireland and you mm -hmm. filled a sketchbook and you were hired at Disney, not necessarily for what you put in front of them, but for right. your sketchbook. For my sketchbook, yeah. And, and like the the fact that you have this in your portfolio is so smart because, yeah, we, we really want to see your thought process and how you build stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think the strength of this, why this is working so well is because you took the time 
to actually do a, a sketch as opposed to sometimes when people try to do color block work, they go straight to the marquee tool. Mm -hmm. And you can tell the difference between someone who's really worked something out mm -hmm. uh, with line and, and with drawing um, and then take it to a flat graphic space versus someone who just jumps to the graphic mm -hmm. uh, quality. So yeah, a lot of sophisticated yeah. stuff going I'm on I'm gonna here. go ahead and appreciate this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait, I wanted to actually go down and see the rest of the Oh, process. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So we've got the sketching. Sketch. And it looks like this is maybe happening in Illustrator. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Really nice. And then going into Photoshop potentially and adding For noisy, like, some of the noise yeah. texture. And then I'd be curious to know how the coloring process happens. Yeah, interesting that he wore grayscale uh, mm -hmm. and then applied color, mm -hmm. which is smart too because then you arrange uh, all your values yeah. Uh, really solidly. Yeah, and I recently learned a trick for, for checking values, and maybe some of you already know it, um, but you put a black layer, uh -huh. you fill a black layer at the very top of your layer stack, uh, yeah. and then set it to color, uh -huh. the, the blend mode to color, and we'll turn everything sort of like grayscale on so you can check your values that way. Oh, wow. Which I thought was a super cool trick. You know what the old school version of that was? No you would keep a piece of red glass at your desk oh. and look through every, look th at your piece through red glass mm -hmm. and it does that same exact thing, but I'd never heard the di digital yeah. equivalent, so. So this is cool. It's oh, interesting to, yeah, like, it's, in, I love watching how this, his style has evolved, right? Mm -hmm. So we've definitely got like this very refined style, but even down to these portraits, which are so simplistic. Yeah. so good. Lovely, really, really nice. Great work, Sergio. Yeah. This is really awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll keep moving along. Oh. Oh, look at that. Oh, uh, that's one of my favorite things to do. There's an artist, um, his name is Orlando Aracena. Uh -huh. He's a big, um, he works in Illustrator a lot, and his, his this is when you do sort of Command Y in Illustrator, oh. and you see all the line work, and he'll do that with some of his stuff, and it's just like, insane. Wow, But wow. this is super cool to see how it all comes that's together. That's an art piece in itself, yep. right? Like, yep. that's I really cool. It. All right, awesome. moving along. Congrats, Sergio. Yay, Sergio, we love nice, it. Nice work. Made our trip to space worth it. Yes, <laughs> definitely coming back. Cool, so this is Hannah Dickens, or Hanna. Uh, I apologize if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. In Yay. Kentucky. So you've got, ooh, let's check out Inktober. Yeah, yeah. Brian's a big, oh my gosh, oh, these, these are, are so these cool. Are great. Super cute. That's one thing that I really love about a lot of people's Inktober challenges is mm -hmm. some people set a time limit. Yes. So say I'm setting myself to 15 minutes and you get these like really simple but really nice mm -hmm. things and it's fun to see how the style evolves yeah. over the course of the month. It's a smart way to get through it too because I know people can be overwhelmed by Inktober, mm -hmm. uh, which it shouldn't be. But setting time limits uh, is a great way to mm -hmm. just kind of like, I'm just going to do something fun for 15 minutes. Yeah, totally. And look at what the result is. You Check know? out this one. I know, I love that. Dog. <laughs> I love that. That's really nice. And I do really think that, you know, when you when you set yourself on a time limit, you force yourself to like quickly make decisions. And sometimes yes. you end up doing really unexpected things that mm -hmm. you wouldn't normally do if you had time to think about That's it. That's right. That's right. And that can lead to really fun, happy accidents. Yes. These oh, are that, really great. That middle witch right there that you're on. This I one? love that That's one. That's cute. Yeah. Super cute. Oh, the skater is nice too. A lot of diversity, but it all holds together similarly. Yes. I really like how there's one maximum two colors. Yep, yep. In each illustration. Yeah. Really nice consistency. Yeah, so great. Yeah. Got a few logos. I'm always a sucker for. Oh logos. yeah, let's see, let's see. My background is is um, wow. graphic design. I call myself a recovering graphic designer. <laughs> so I'm a, a UX UI designer who yes. just still really loves graphic design. Oh, that's Any awesome. Any chance I get, I love doing it. Logos are super fun. Yeah. Very nice. Really nice. Lovely type. Yeah, uh, it's logos are my kryptonite, so mm -hmm. I'm envious of anyone who can actually. Ooh, that's I'm great. curious what the um, yeah what right the name is for that one. I feel like there's some sort of clever nod mm -hmm. there. Looks like an Oculus. Yeah. I don't know if it's the Oculus logo redesign or. Ooh, this one's that's nice. That's great. Re very clever. Mm -hmm. Oh, there oh, you the go. One the one project. The one project. Very that's cool. nice. 
Yeah, someone just pointed out to me the arrow in FedEx and it blew my mind. The FedEx oh, logo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, man, it's a whole nother level. Yeah. This Thank is great you. work. I, yeah, nice work, Hannah. I love that. Oh, these are, yeah. See, and even we talked about this yesterday. There's so much motion, like yep, the those hands, hands aren't are in, finished. Right, but that's what help. That's what makes it. Oh my gosh, yeah. If you would have gone through and like tied down those hands, mm -hmm. it, it would have really taken it away. Yeah, those are nice. Um, someone's asking for the link. Um, it looks like Hannah's Hannah's um, link is behance.net slash Hannah Dickens, and she uses a lot of Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, and Adobe Portfolio. Can you see the Veruca Salt one, that first one? Oh yeah, sure. That's great. That's fun. Reimagining the characters of old dolls. Really fun. Super fun. I love the contrast of the very skinny legs mm -hmm. to the skirt and the big coat. Very nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Good job. Let me see if we've got any more coming in. I know, I thought Paul said he submitted something, but I'm not yeah. seeing it. We can continue looking Yeah. at these. What's that? Um, Which one? Oh, this one's nice too. Yeah. Let's this see. one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that one. That one looks. Whoa. Oh, whoa. Cool. That's cool. That is really awesome. So much detail. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, there's a lot that makes something like this come together. Uh huh. And I love the little pullouts, sort of the close-ups. Yeah. Little yeah. X-wing action there. Yeah. It's great. They're very, very nice. Cool. Well, let me see. Check to see if any more got added. Yeah. Not this time, it looks like, but maybe next time. Next time. Let's give a shout out to Yay. Hannah and Sergio. Nice work. And Amazing. thank you so much for submitting. This was yes. awesome. This was fun. So fun. And it's so great to see your guys' work. So mm -hmm. thank you for sharing. Yeah. So we've got about, what, 10, 12, 13 minutes left. Mm -hmm. Should we go back and. Yeah, should we finish this one up? Yeah, let's do it. Great. Finish this one up. It's almost done. Um, all the watercolor is done, so now I'm going to go in uh, with uh, and just shade it a little bit with a colored pencil look to just give it that little extra bit of warmth. So it's a new layer. I'm going to go in and um, I actually wanted to try it with the rake brush because I liked how that was looking. And here what's nice, unlike real watercolor, we can take lighter colors and uh, be opaque over them. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to start with like the muddy boots. Actually, let's start with, with his head. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, that's super cool. So satisfying. Right? Like they, it's almost like a half tone uh -huh. grunge newsprint look. Mm -hmm. It just goes through. And less is more, you know? Yeah. Should be like, as you move along in the process, each phase you do is less and less mm -hmm. because you're just adding on. And then I think what I'll do is I'll set this to multiply. Oh yeah, so it kind of blends a little mm -hmm. bit more. Which is right up here, actually. I know, multiply is kind of my go-to. Yes. It's always the easy one that I know it's going to do what I need to do. Uh -huh. Multiply and like soft light for some reason. I, yes. I find that those are, are my two that I use the most often. Yeah, totally. Come in here. You just kind of get a little shading. Mm hmm Yeah, I do like how it kind of just roughs everything up just a touch, and it feels yeah. like it goes along really well with sort of the, sort of like what Jasper is. Yeah, it kind of tells his story mm -hmm. visually. Um, yeah. And also, I, I know we, um, I think people are just like amazed they're about watching you work. If you have <laughs> any final questions for Brian, we do have about five to 10 minutes left. Yeah. Otherwise, stalk him on Instagram at Brian Kessinger. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. 
<laughs> I'll be around. You're one of those lucky Oops. people that got your name sort of everywhere. Yeah, crazy, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's been uh, a little handy. Go here. Yeah, I know. I, I was kind of the same way. I was I was mentioning yesterday my I my former name was oh, yes. Brooke Francesi, and I I got that name everywhere because it was like an easy one to get. And then I got married, and I was like, ah. I don't know. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone's always confused. Thank you, Voodoo Val, for posting Brian's Instagram. Oh, thank you. Link, follow him. Yeah, I post a lot there, so mm -hmm. be prepared. And you say you do live streams on Instagram I do. sometimes yeah. as well, mm -hmm. which is super fun. Fun thing, a fun story about snagging usernames was uh, because I was working on Wreck-It Ralph mm -hmm. early on before uh, the movie was public and that sort of thing. I had just gotten an Xbox, mm -hmm. and so I'm like, "Oh, I'm gonna take Fix It Felix." <laughs> so my gamer tag on Xbox is just clean Fix It Felix. Nice. And uh, that's I'm super fun. Pretty happy about that. I right, see you, Spencer. Thanks for joining, and Kerwin Thank is asking. You. Um, would you ever like to direct your own feature? Oh yes, that's that's my career goal at the moment. Um, and I'm happy to say that some opportunities are starting to present themselves. Oh, that's so, super cool. Yeah, that's, that's, thank you. That's, um, we'll see if I can land them, but uh, that's uh, definitely my goal, is I feel that after working in layout, visual development, and story, um, I really love seeing other people take ideas and mm -hmm. elevate them. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the job of a director to really create a creative sandbox that other artists want to flock to and play in. Yep. So that's why I like doing with my books is like kind of creating these worlds and characters that people like get right away and mm -hmm. can add to. So um, that's super cool. Yeah, that's my. Um, well, you'll have to keep us updated. Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, there's one last detail. If we go here. And so what, another thing I like to do, just finish it off, this is another drawing I did in Oh here. my gosh, that's super fun. So from Mandalorian, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and what I did was I went and I found uh, a, a watercolor texture. Was it on here? Oh, I might have deleted it. Um, one thing you can do to really kind of finish off your drawing is if you go to Adobe Stock or any other kind of sharing stock photo place they have uh, watercolor paper textures mm -hmm. and you can bring it onto your art set it to multiply on top of everything and you get that toothy grain and yeah. you can really like yeah uh, trick the viewer yeah that's one thing people have been asking for a lot are watercolor paper textures so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i cannot confirm nor deny anything there you go there you go <laughs> so that's one that i finished and then this was another one just playing around. Oh, something. super cool. So you can see that's the same yeah. sort of techniques I'm doing. We're just drawing with the graphite pencil uh -huh. and then going through with washes and different grunge brushes. Oh, really nice. Um, so there's that one there. And then this was kind of fun. This is just like a random like orc troll type creature. Cool. Um, and this was really fun uh, just to kind of get in there and get the big shapes moving mm -hmm. around. So. Mm -hmm. Um, lots of potential and, you know, so easy. Um, this is another fun one I did um, in here. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, lots do we of... want to show people who maybe are new today what we did yesterday? Yeah, that would be great. This is what yesterday's project was. So, um, Otto and Victoria, the two you've seen floating in the background behind us, mm -hmm. uh, Otto being a mechanic on Victoria's little uh, helicopter, personal uh, octopod, <laughs> if we could call that. So really fun, fun stuff. Yeah, so we have another question. If you're gonna be doing more uh, streams and more information stuff for artists to, so they can learn more from you. Yeah, that's why I really like doing the live streams on Instagram because mm -hmm. they do become mini tutorial sessions. Yeah. Um, and it's less structured, it's more just as I'm drawing, kind of like what we're doing here today, mm -hmm. uh, answering questions as they come up, or if something strikes me, uh, I can bring it up. But they're pretty chill. I put music on in the background, and we talk about drawing and pop culture. It's almost like a late night art talk oh, show. Oh, that's fun. So um, yeah, definitely check those out. And they go away, uh, so they're kind of fleeting, which is mm -hmm. kind of fun. 
Uh, so, um, yeah. Are you able to save those at all? Or yeah, no? you can okay. save them. The only problem is Instagram locks them in portrait mode. Oh. So I can't really put them on YouTube. And because yeah. I play music, I can't put them on YouTube. Gotcha. So, oh, right. So uh, right. it's a little gorilla. It's a little underground. <laughs> but um, come by and check them out. So what is some of your favorite stuff to listen to while you're doing the podcast? Uh, it depends on, like, what I'm drawing. Okay. So, like, if I'm doing Jasper art, I usually put on, like, old old school bluegrass like oh, yeah, like fun. just in the background yep. you know and um when i was doing last year i did a series called ink bots okay which was like um 1920s robots so i put on like old jazz and that sort of thing nice. so it usually is specific and then sometimes devolves into me just taking requests <laughs> <laughs> it's very strange but yeah. it's fun that's cool. Yeah. So definitely. Ashley's wondering if there's if you have any tips for writing or developing stories. Now that's not drawing, but I think that fits right in because oh, totally. an illustration is a story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, I do the way I develop my stories is through drawing. So um, I will fill my sketchbook. I take my sketchbook everywhere, and it's not just the iPad, but an actual physical one, and just start drawing random stuff, and you start to draw connections between those things. And that's how I build my stories because that's how I was kind of trained at Disney mm -hmm. was to really just take the visuals first because it's such a visual medium. Yeah. Uh, because the more visual storytelling you can do, I think the more successful mm -hmm. your stories are. And truly, even if they are written novels, like you can be visual, right? Yeah. And get into and really like open up the imagery in people's minds. Um, so sketching for me is the best way to mm -hmm. kind of develop um, those stories and then just having a knowledge of film structure watching a lot of movies you start to gain that second language of mm -hmm. like a three-act structure and where things need to happen right. so um, that just comes from osmosis of of watching movies not so much reading books about mm -hmm. movies but watching them yeah well it's so interesting too I'm totally blanking on the name of the um, it was a Disney film that was just music oh Fantasia Fantasia yeah yeah Love um, that. Like that's a really good example mm -hmm. of like the visuals did yes. what they need to do and the music behind it was sort of like it amplified mm -hmm. the story. Or mm -hmm. Polar Express is another one. Yes, right, right. And we uh, we have a phrase uh, in animation that's like, sound down, will this work? Oh, Meaning cool. like, could you turn the sound off on this movie and people would still know what's going on? And that's a great way to judge oh, yeah. if, your, uh, if your storytelling is working. That is a really great tip. Yeah. Oh, from the planet Mars, someone said. <laughs> Neighbors. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't decided where we're actually. Are we just maybe orbiting? The I Earth? think we're just slowly <laughs> orbiting the Earth. We're about to head over Australia Get right me down. now. Right. <laughs> Cool. Awesome. Well, this has been fun. Um, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you again, everyone, for stopping by. We had a great time. Yeah, so much fun. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I don't know who's up next, but I'm sure they'll be amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Guaranteed. And thank you again for everything that you, all your portfolio re re uh, reviews. Yes. Uh, it looks like up next we have the XD Creative Ch Challenge, and then we'll have an XDK. So we're Ooh, on to UX nice. design. So thank awesome. you, everyone. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. You're almost to Friday. <laughs>